welcome back so in today's video we are going to discuss a very important aspect of heat exchanger networking and that is network optimization and as such you know we would realize that after sticking to the pinch and sticking to delta t minimum at the end we realize that those things were imaginary and we can always you know relax those constraints for the overall benefit of the plant and overall uh, benefit for the process so let us try to now unlearn to you know maintain delta t minimum or you know to erase the pinch which was a vertical line in a heat exchanger network and try to see how can we benefit by violating the rules which we only you know uh, made very stringent so let us take them one by one the constraint that no exchanger should have a temperature difference smaller than delta t minimum can now be relaxed see why we kept that constraint the reason for keeping that constraint till now is that we wanted to have a tight energy balance and we never wanted to go beyond the energy target so we set the target and we have achieved the target so that was the perspective only from the per, uh, you know from uh, the energy point of view if we can relax this to some of the exchanges right maybe capital cost can you know uh, can decrease and if it is happening so my total cost will also decrease so i'll not be very keen about maintaining delta t minimum what i'll be uh, trying to do is i'll maintain the delta t which is practically possible for the given type of heat exchanger and we know that for every uh, heat exchanger has a practical value of difference of temperature and we should not go below that now the pinch will no longer be existing and one can transfer heat from one region to another region in fact now there are no regions now it is only the streams which are exchanging heat which is with each other and we'll only uh, be talking about can we shift the energy which is being transferred to one uh, stream right in one exchanger to the same stream in another exchanger thereby can we reduce the number of heat exchangers existing in the uh, heat exchanger network so we'll try and do that and we'll see that now we can transfer the heat across the pinch however keep one thing in mind that while are you designing heat exchanger network while you are preparing pta all the rules which we have discussed will remain as it is once you are you have finalized your network in order to optimize we are going to you know relax these rules to minimize the costing the only objective now would remain to minimize the total cost the optimization is based on redistribution of exchanger duty so say for example we have uh, you know placed the match and said that we will uh, use 8 megawatt of the exchange but then if you remember we said that the heat duty we calculated were for above pinch and below pinch separately but a process stream you know maybe above the pinch and below the pinch so when when i talk about a process stream the total heat which it can give away if it is hot stream or total heat which it will receive if it is a cold stream would be different from above pinch and below pinch separately it will be the addition of the two regions and hence now i have a you know broader play field i can you know make a, a one single exchanger to exchange a duty and can remove the other exchanger we will see that as we proceed further so some exchanger should perhaps be larger some smaller and some perhaps may be removed from the design all to be so if we can shift the duties this many changes can take place and we'll see with the help of the diagram itself exchanges are removed from the design if the optimization sets their duty to zero so say for example one exchanger is exchanging x megawatt right and if i shift that entire x megawatt to the other exchanger of the same stream right then what will happen is that the heat required for that particular exchanger becomes zero and it completes gets eliminated from the entire network the removal of one exchanger means so you know uh, maybe the utility on the other side would increase but your uh, you know your capital cost may go down so ultimately you have to see the total cost given a network network structure it is possible to identify loops and paths for it and they both provide degrees of freedom in terms of designing or evaluating your evolving your design of heat exchanger network let us try to see them so this is a typical heat exchanger network design and as you can see that the pinch has been removed from that there is no vertical line which separates above and below pinch region and if you see the dotted line which connects exchanger b and e then that forms a loop right a loop is something where you know uh, you have the energies uh, you have the exchanges which are on the same stream 
and it exchanges the energy and overall what happens is that now as as have been shown here plus u and minus u so suppose this is the exchanger which is exchanging some amount of heat and out of that heat i am removing u unit of energy so the moment i i say that okay earlier it was exchanging x amount of energy now it will exchange x minus u amount that means what for that particular stream the overall requirement of the energy is same right 250 minus 40 into cp right this exchanger was exchanging x now it is exchanging x minus u so in the same stream i must add somewhere that additional u right so either here or here or here but if i add it here what happens if i add it to this exchanger what will happen is in the same way since this is exchanging energy between this this x minus u also needs to be compensated so this will become plus u so this becomes an entire loop where i have shifted the energy u amount of energy from exchanger e to b without impacting any other exchanger in the network without impacting the overall energy requirement overall energy balance yes it will impact the temperature distribution yes it is quite possible that in you know in the uh, streams which which are exchanging energy between uh, you know this stream number 2 and stream number 1 there might be changes in the temperature because this temperature would change if i am making x minus u this temperature would change if i am making x minus u this temperature will change if i am making it x this won't change because this overall will be zero so so it will impact the heat exchangers which are associated with those streams but overall your energy balance will not be impacted and that is the reason we are going to say that will release delta t minimum if this temperature which is coming here which is exchanging with this is not maintaining delta t minimum but it is maintaining the uh, minimum practical requirement of the type of exchanger which is you see here we'll go ahead with this because it is quite possible that if this would have been u only right if the energy required here would be u only then this becomes u minus u and your exchanger e is completely eliminated so this is a loop right and i can eliminate an exchanger within a loop another example of the loop is this right this is a bit complex loop right in the same uh, uh, heat exchanger network so this is another loop where i have connection of a exchanger b exchanger then d then c so this makes a loop loop is something where in your energy exchange which is taking place is taken care within the loop itself and no excess energy is transferred to the exchangers which are not part of this loop nor to the utility right so loop means you have a net zero enthalpy balance within all the exchangers which are taking part in the loop it will not um, impact the exchangers which are not part of that loop nor the uh, utility so here also you can shift your duty so you can shift this duty so this is minus v so this earlier was x let it be x minus v so now this will impact this c so this will impact this and hence this will impact this so this also becomes minus v and since this is minus v this will be plus v so this will impact this so overall energy balance here is same overall energy balance here is same here it is same and here is same so this loop will exploit in order to make sizes smaller or because of that some sizes may become larger or maybe we eliminate the exchanger entirely depending upon our total costing calculation similar to that you have a utility path utility path connects to utility so it could be one hot and one cold or maybe two hot utilities or maybe two cold utilities whatever but it should start from a utility and end at a utility utility and whatever number of exchanges are coming in between it will be you know considering that so say for example if i make plus w here then naturally it will impact either a or c right but if i go to c it will come here then it will come to d then it will come to this then it will come to this then it will go to this and then it will reach c because the moment c is getting impacted with w minus w this will become minus w if this becomes minus w in order to maintain this particular energy uh, you know exchange i have to make this plus w so this plus w gets impacted here it means this will become minus w this minus w will ultimately go to plus w so then this is another utility path 
which we are having here. The one very simplest of is shown here H to exchanger A from A it's not going to be if it is going to be it should come here so but there is no impact on the energy of B so from minus W directly it comes to plus W so what is happening here is that my energy like utility on both cold and hot side increases but if by doing that if I can eliminate exchanger A entirely then I can always do that because I always need to use uh, you know cooling and hot utility so I, there are always exchanges but if I can add this uh, W amount and eliminate A then I can always do that. Another way another use of this utility is that if there is a loop which has removed a particular exchanger because of that there will be temperature redistribution and if by chance the delta T is not being maintained at any place because of the removal of an exchanger we can exploit the utility path and we can restore the temperature back to the desired value of delta T minimum. We will see that in one of the examples in some upcoming videos. So this is your utility path. This is another utility path which I have already shown. So I think I will not discuss this further. So within the context of optimization only those paths that connect two different utilities need to be considered. I also told you that this could be a hot utility to cold utility or maybe from a hot utility to another hot utility. Right, and these are termed as utility paths. All loops and utility paths needs to be optimized simultaneously. Stream split may also may exist in a design, and variations of their branch flow rates can also be superimposed here on the exploitation of loops and paths in the optimization problem. So, stream split flow rate is an additional variable. Now, pinch is no longer a constraint, and hence, what you have is loops, paths, stream split. They are providing the degrees of freedom for manipulating the network. Your basic objective is to minimize the total costing. In practice, rather than manipulating loops and paths explicitly, the optimization is normally formulated such that the individual duties on each mesh are varied in the multivariate optimization. So we don't exploit loop and uh, path every time. For every exchanger, we vary the, uh, you know, heat requirement and see the impact on the total cost exchange of heat. So it changes and we see that on the optimization. But there are certain constraints. The constraints are the total enthalpy change on each stream being within a specified tolerance of the original stream data. So you cannot, you know, make a huge change in the enthalpy data for a stream because otherwise it will impact the temperatures. No negative heat duty for each match. So every match must have positive heat duty exchange. Positive temperature difference for each exchange and to be greater than a practical minimum, which I already told you. And for stream splits, branch flow rates must be positive and above a practical minimum flow rate required for the for the heat exchange. So these are your constraint. In a network, some of the duties on the matches will not be able to be varied because they are not in a loop or a utility path. So this simplifies the optimization. Some of the exchangers will not be part of the loop or path, and then we just keep them as it is. Unless there is some uh, you know impact of the other design, will not touch them. If the network is optimized at a fixed energy consumption, that means your utility requirement is fixed, then only loops and stream splits are exploited. Then we don't touch utility path because the moment you touch utility path, it will increase the amount of utility. But if your energy consumption is fixed, only consider loops and the stream splits as your variables or degrees of freedom for optimization. When energy consumption is allowed to vary, utility path must also be included because that will naturally help to decrease the capital cost. How? Because as the network energy consumption increases, the overall capital cost tends to decrease and hence we can always change the energy consumption, right? So ultimately, the all and all the discussion here is that now once the network is there in front of you, optimize it by keeping all other fundamentals in mind to decrease the total costing. So we'll see an example when we meet in our next video, how do we identify the loops and paths and how do we implement so that we can eliminate exchanger, we can minimize the total cost. Thank you.